Hello everybody, here I am in my little yard here with uh, all these different types of different fruit trees, all these different varieties of, uh, of, of different fruit trees, but mostly mangoes. And I always have questions when I interview people on this show, on this video show about what do they mean when they say cross-pollinating or this mango has these parents and this. I just did a video recently about the Edward mango and a lot of these newer varieties, Edward mango is one of the parents. So what do they mean by parents? Well, I've interviewed people that have been doing this a lot longer than I and asked them about what they mean by this. And Alex at Tropical Acres Farm recently gave me a great example, an in-depth conversation we had about what does it mean when it says this is the Parrington parent or or this mango and so on. So check it out. Here it goes. When you say parents and crossing, explain a little for the viewers what they mean, but what do you mean by crossing? Explain if this is natural with the hand pile, then there's crossing by just putting a tree next to each other. Right. I mean, you can put two trees next to one another and there's a decent chance they'll pollinate one another, but that's not guaranteed. Um, so, um, but a hybrid would be something that is a cross between its parent and something else. And sometimes between a parent and itself. So that can occur too with mangoes. Uh, there is some evidence that mangoes favor cross-pollination, and so um, the Edward mango, for example, its um, its maternal parent, as we would say, would be the Hayden. It was a Hayden seedling, okay? But the um, the pollinating parent was likely the Carabao of the Philippine. So um, we'd say that was the paternal parent of the Edward mango, and um, and so most Florida mangoes have. Um, Two different parents but some of them only have one so like for example there's some of the Hayden seedlings are probably Hayden by Hayden um, that can happen too because mangoes can self-pollinate so once once the mango starts growing from the seed are you talking before the first crop another pollen from another tree gets to it or how no uh, the, the, the genetic material that will determine what that tree is like and what that fruit is like is all contained within the seed that was planted so um, when, it, when that flower opens up on that tree um, and it gets pollinated by that other, other variety, um, that is where the, uh, the, the zygote is formed, okay? So it's from sexual reproduction, if you will. And you end up with a unique um, embryo, okay? And that embryo uh, turns into a seed, okay, with a, you know, a fleshy a mesocarp, as we'd call it, the, the, the fruit around it, okay? And, um, and so then we end up with, um, you know, a, a fruit that, the seed in which uh, contains all the genetic material that's going to determine what that tree's going to behave like and what the fruit's going to be like. And in, with each one of these Edward mangoes is that kind of genetic material for a new variety, so to speak. So can one tree of a seedling have different a uh, pollen parent, or is every every mango that's growing on that tree, that seedling, would it be the same? Every mango that grows on that tree will have the same maternal parent, which is, you know, in this case, it would be Edward would be the maternal parent of every one of these seeds. Um, but Just like have, the maternal parent of this one would be the Hayden. Um, well, the maternal parent of the Edward variety is the Hayden. Yeah. That's right. Yes. So, um, but they can have, you know, a huge number of different pollen parents, depending yeah. on what's growing around them. Yeah. So when you spoke so. about like Zill's program and so on, so you plant this, you have the seedling, and then how does, so it gets pollinated by, let's say you have two different trees, one on this side and one on this side. Mm -hmm. Can they both pollinate the same or one gets to it first? How does that work? Well, um, I mean, you've got a flower that's open on either tree, right? And so pollen is going to come either from that tree or the tree next door. And sometimes a tree way further away. You don't know what's going to carry the pollen from somewhere else over there. But whatever gets to it first and pollinates it first is going to be the, mater the paternal parent. So there's only one flower, one tree, one time to determine for the rest of the tree? Um, to determine for that seed, yes. So there's only one flower per seed? Um, yeah, there's only one flower per seed. Yeah, that's right. So, um, and the seed on some mangoes, like polyembryonic mangoes, it can contain asexual embryos, which are just clones of the parent. I need to mention that. Edward's a monoembryonic mango, so um, it's only going to produce one um, zygotic embryo. But polyembryonic mangoes will produce actually asexual, non-zygotic embryos, as well as one zygote. In the, in the same seed, so. Meaning poly, if you have that 
and you plant the seed, it'll most likely be another similar to the Edward, right? Uh, if it was poly, Edward is not poly, so yeah, you're never yeah, gonna yeah. you're if never gonna poly. get if it was, yeah. So a mango like Namdok Mai, for example, a common polyembryonic mango, um, can come true from seed a majority of the time. But there's still going to be some one at least one shoot or well a shoot in every Namdok Mai seed is going to be um, zygotic. There's going to be a zygotic embryo in there somewhere, and it might be similar to the parent. It might be very different from the parent. Um, it depends. So, um, but it's still going to be genetically unique versus the asexual clones that are um, genetically identical to the parent. So once the seedling starts growing the flower. That's when it's pollinated, and that will determine for that particular tree, and, um, and any seed from that tree, what it's going to be for the future, right? Um, uh, okay. So you have you have your seedling, and it gets yeah. pollen pollinated. Let's say by hand. Right. It was pollinated before it ever became a seed. Yeah. Okay. So you, so it's pollinated. When is it pollinated? Before it became a seed. When it's. It was when it was on the tree, becoming a before it became a fruit. It got pollinated. And then in your, in your oh, seed is, is that genetic material from the two parents. It produces a seedling, and there's your new variety. Okay. So, okay. And then that one fruits, flowers, and it can create new mangoes too. So if you have a big tree, let's say you have a big Edward tree. Yeah. And you're hand pollinating the flower on the tree. Mm -hmm. There's one flower on a tree only, or more than one on a tree? Oh, I mean, uh, thousands of flowers. Yeah, so can you tree. hand pollinate yeah. different? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like every flower could potentially be a different, um, you know, genetic individual. I so, got it. And as yeah. long as it's labeled correctly, you know what. Not that necessarily. You don't made. necessarily know what the cross is for sure until you do some kind of pedigree analysis. Um, you can surmise to a degree um, what the cross was. Um, of course, you always know what the maternal parent was, but it's the paternal parent that can be tricky. So um, and. There's different ways of doing that. I mean, like, of course, when this tree starts bearing fruit, if you see similarities um, in its traits to another mango, particularly one that's nearby, then, then you, you know, can okay. kind of make an educated guess. Now, before that point in time, it can be difficult, and of course, it takes many years for seedlings and Florida fruit. So um, you can make some educated guesses based on the aroma of the sap. And uh, that's what Gary Zill did, for example, in his program. You know, he planted thousands of seedlings, but he didn't want to get, um, you know, uh, in, in a lot of cases, he didn't want to get genetic copies of the polyembryonic parents of some of those mangoes. And so he looked for unique aromas that came from the sap and when he, when he would crush up the leaves. So that's one way that you can detect whether something is, for one thing, a genetic uh, copy or a, a different unique individual uh, compared to its parent, and as well as what is the mango going to taste like later on when sure. it starts to fruit? You know, the aroma gives you some cues. Now, did he hand pollinate all his? When no, he, did he didn't hand pollinate. He just planted seeds. Um, hand pollinate man mangoes is a little tricky because the flowers are very small. You know, think of like a lot of flowering plants have relatively large blooms that are very accessible. Mangoes, the flowers are like very tiny or relatively tiny. And so it can be done, they can be hand pollinated. But in, in that particular program, it was just seeds planted, parent, uh, maternal parent recorded, uh, paternal parent speculated on um, in, the, in the notes. So Have you yourself crossed any? I've not. David Sturrock did um, on this property. Of course, he patented the Duncan and the Young, and he bred a few other varieties. So there was mango breeding done here back in the 50s and 60s. Um, but I have not done any myself. Maybe someday um, we've talked about that. Me and Jack Sturrock have talked about what would we be crossing if we decided to do something like that. That is a very long-term project, um, which there's ways to speed it up a little bit, but you're still talking about something that is years and years and years in the making. And I don't personally have a lot of time right now for doing something like that. Maybe someday I will. You know, we've already got 300 varieties of mangoes here, and um, that's a lot to be evaluating to begin with. And if we were evaluating seedlings, you know, that's, that's a whole nother animals. All right, everybody, that was Alex at Tropical Acres Farm. All his information is below the video. Uh, check it out and go there and check him out. He has a lot of information about all different mangoes and just some good knowledgeable information. And the next time you're deciding which mango to get, or if you're deciding to cross pollinate or grow mangoes yourself, now maybe you can have a little bit of better idea what they mean when they say 
And when you look it up and say the parent of this mango is this and this and so on. All right, everybody, have a great day out there and keep growing.